Father's Day, and uh, as Father's Day was approaching, I kind of had time to think about the climate of the society that we live in today, and kind of the climate and the thought and the attitude towards men versus the character and the strength that God says a man is in. And I gotta say, it, it, it's really not easy to be a man today in our society. I mean, you've got the radical feminist movement. They've They've taken the good that has come from the women's movement of fairness, respect, all those things. And, and somehow they, 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 they've turned this into a battle of the sexes. You know, that we're at enmity with one another. You know, where, where men now, you know, are the enemies. And, you know, we, we might feel, well, the radical feminist movement is just a small percent of society. Folks, they have, they have succeeded in confusing the relationships between men and women. And they have influenced how men and their nature is perceived today. I mean, no more is there this one male model that we all aspire to. Now many men aren't sure what their identity should be. You know, are we supposed to be John Wayne, you know, strong and gentle, or Ray Ramon, you know, uh, you know, the life of the party, and whatever it might be, Clint Eastwood, you know, handing out justice. In fact, one man said, between my boss, my wife, and my children, Someone was always mad at me. <laughs> you feel like that? And then there's this little rhyme that says, Women's faults are many. Men have only two. Everything they say and everything they do. <laughs> uh, men, do you ever feel like that? You know, that, that, that it, yeah, that's the climate we're saying. No matter what we do, we, 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 we seem to be met with a wall. Well, I'm here this morning to tell you, men, that uh, fads and opinions of who we are and what we should be doing they're going to come and go. But we need to know that there is a God in heaven. He is your creator. He is my creator. And he has given you your identity. And he has given you the tools to fulfill that identity. And in part, um, I want to take a look at it for just about 10 minutes here this morning. I want to take a look at what some of the parts of that, that identity is. And uh, what I'd like to do, I want to take you to a portion of scripture in the Old Testament. Probably one of the most intimate and personal exchanges between two people, uh, a father and a son, that you'll find anywhere in Scripture. And if you go to 1 Kings uh, chapter 2 with me, and I'm going to ask you, as, as we always do in respect of God's word, if you will stand together with me in 1 Kings chapter 2. We're going to look at verses 1 through 4. Uh, and just to give you a little background here, David is, has been the king in Israel for 40 years, and he is now coming to the point of his deathbed. And as he is, a, you know, just before he dies, he calls his son Solomon to come in, that he might give him some final words before he passes on. So it's kind of like the handing off of the baton here. Here's what's taking place. So it says in verses 1 through 4, it says, As David's time to die drew near, he charged Solomon his sword, saying, his son, saying, I am going the way of all the earth. Be strong, therefore, and show yourself a man. Keep the charge of the Lord your God to walk in his ways and to keep his statutes, his commandments, his ordinances, and his testimony according to what is written in the law of Moses, that you may succeed in all that you do and wherever you turn, so that the Lord may carry out his promise which he spoke concerning me, saying that if your sons are careful, careful of their way to walk before me in truth and with all their heart and with all their soul, you shall not lack a man on the throne of Israel. Now in this exchange between David and his son Solomon, there are many points of direction and praise that we could pull out for God and man. I want to just talk to you about a couple of them. And the first one, it, it might be a little bit obvious here from the text, but you notice here that David is about to die. That's what precedes this, this whole interaction with his son David. He's about to die. Now if we think about David, you know, up to this point we have seen David in all sorts of stages. You know, we've, we've seen David as a fugitive hiding from Saul. We've seen David as a mighty warrior, you know, David and Goliath. You know, we've seen David as a good man, David as a godly man, you know, having that heart after God, the, all the psalms that, that God inspired him to, to, to write. And now we see David as a dying man. He's come to the end of his life. And folks, regardless of, of who you are, Regardless of, of what you are today or what you do in this life, the whole point. 
point here is that it will end. Whether you are great or horrible, whether you are godly or ungodly, whether you are good and bad, it's all going to end one day. The real question for us here as we look at our text is what will we leave? What really matters in life that we are building towards to leave to our next generation? When you cut through all of the fluff, what are the significant things that really matter that will be left? Well, this is what David wanted his son to remember. You could have talked to him about a lot of different things. But this is what he focused on, verse 2 and 3. He said, I am going the way of all the earth. Be strong, therefore, and show yourself a man. Keep the charge of the Lord your God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes, his commandments, his ordinances, and his testimony according to what is written in the law of Moses, that you may succeed in all that you do and wherever you turn. David, in, in essence, was saying to Solomon, son, the key of life is, 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 is to be godly, to be steadfast, to be committed to God, be obedient to his guidebook. Read it, learn it, listen to it. Let it guide you and direct the decisions you're making. And folks, these were more than just simple words from David, you know, little cliches that he was throwing out at the end of the life. There was a life consistency behind his charge and what he was asking Solomon to do. He wasn't sharing these words of regret. You know, son, I wish I wish I'd served the Lord more. You know, I wish I'd, you know, listened to God's word more and, and been obedient and, and, and served to me. It wasn't words of regret. But son, rather, this is what made me who I am. And now, son, show yourself to be a man. You know, have those same rock-solid foundations that God has used in my life. And we all know this. We all know our kids. I mean, if, if these had been empty, hollow words, you know, what would Solomon's reaction have been? You know, Solomon would have walked away, yeah, sure, Dad. You want me to, something, to be something that you never were. Or that you never tried to be. You know, it's important that we have a testimony behind, not just the thoughts, not just desires we want for our kids. But are we an example of it? Is that the, 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 the passion of our hearts? Now, we have something uh, for you uh, fathers today. And, and actually, it's not just for the fathers. But it's for all the men. If you're graduated from high school, uh, we have something for you. And we're going to hand on just a, a little bit uh, here. But it, 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 it's in a way of a testimony for us to remember you know, those characters, those nature that God's put them in. And what are you going to get in the packet? First of all, you're going to get a pen with it. Uh, and this is, you know, again, specifically for fathers. It says, blessed is the father who walks with God. And it's a reminder for you, you know, that that's what a walk is should be. We should be walking, following after our Heavenly Father. But in this packet you're going to be given, it says six ways faith in God will make you stronger. We are going to give you a milky way. Because the Lord directs you in the way of righteousness. Yes, these are cheesy. But you're going to remember it. Huh? You're going to get a Kit Kat. Because your trust in God helps you handle the challenges when you're in a crunch. Okay? You can moan anytime you please. You're going to be given a Tootsie Roll. Because your faith makes a, you a great role model for your family. You're going to be given a golf tee because God's guidance keeps you on the course of a bountiful life. We are going to give you a rubber band because devotion to your church surrounds you with people who help encourage and enlighten you. And then finally, you're going to be given a peppermint patty because a commitment to follow the Word of God inspires you to be your very best. So we have a video here. What we're going to do, we're going to be showing this video. And why we show this video? Can we grab some of these youth kids? Can you help? They're going to help. We've got a box here. All of them, and you can stay seated, but all of them, and if you're graduated from high school, out there, if you're from college, you don't have necessarily a father, but we have these things for you. So they're going to walk down the aisle, they're going to hand these out while we uh, uh, play this video for you. Right. Just like I designed the plan for this parking garage, God has a plan for each one of us, and it's a good plan. You can have a firm foundation just like that building. Okay, maybe 
not just like that, brother. We're all gonna get fire on it. Spiritually, we're, we're all lost. We've been around that tree like five times already. We're in big trouble. We're fine, we're fine. Hey guys, on a totally unrelated note, if you were to die today, do you know where you would end up eternal? We don't want to die, that's why we hired you.
Interestingly, as our children are asked what they need from their fathers, it really runs against what society kind of says that they need. Matter of fact, I have surveyed, I have asked children this question before. The question of what do you like most about your father? You know some of the answers that I get? It's not about their fathers bought them something. You know, no new Nintendo or no Mutant Ninja Turtle this or that or PS4. The answers overwhelmingly that our children give involve the father spending time with them. You know, when he, when he talks with me, when he wrestles with me, when he plays baseball or goes on tractor rides or when we're walking together or going fishing. You know, we, we have an impact, and, and it's just not fathers, it's, it's grandfathers as well. We're leaving an imprint. Matter of fact, uh, humorously, um, we've been taking uh, my boys, Aaron and, and Caleb, we've been taking their oldest boys, my grandsons, golfing with us. And then kind of get out there and spend some time with dad and with grandpa. And uh, a few weeks ago, we were out on the golf course, and I had a little short two foot putt that I missed. And uh, I was really frustrated, <laughs> and so I took the club and I swung it, just as Aaron walked in the way, and I smacked Aaron in the shin, and it, it got him pretty good, it, it gave him some gash, as a matter of fact, it kind of fell down, kind of passed out, blood all over the course. <laughs> I'm not kidding you, we quit golfing at that point. So now Isaac's description of golf is, Pappy hit Daddy with the club, <laughs> and that's a heritage that we leave because they're watching. Just, it matters the time. And the common denominator is that, is that relationship. It's, it's, it's activity together. Simply spending time with dad. A consistent testimony with them. And, and what influence that God has given us man. What a powerful influence. That I can have a significant impact in imparting the God whom I love, the God whom I serve, by simply taking time with my children. And investing in them, talking with them, walking with them, instilling in them the same character that I want to emulate of my, my Heavenly Father. And, and you get the idea, our kids don't need things. You don't pass down things from one generation to another. Or you shouldn't just pass down things from one generation to another. You should pass down a person, a presence, a heart for God. I'm going to make another one real quick observation here, another observation. David's life was judged based on the character of his heart, not on what he owned. i got to tell you, you, think about that, it's easy to say that, wow, you know, we think about David as in terms of godliness, not about what he had. But think about this, this is King David. He owned a lot. He was the king, he was the ruler of the known world. He had conquered nation upon nation, and every nation that he conquered, there were the spoils of war. That, that, that he received so much of it. He had a lot. But in this he didn't call his son Solomon and say, Solomon, I give you this, and I give you this kingdom, and this kingdom, and these borders. It wasn't that he didn't have anything to give, but he made sure that he gave the most important thing. And then the trend today is it, it just runs so counter to the nature and, and the truth of God. I mean, if, if we wear the right clothes and you get the right title, the right position, the right job, if you drive the right vehicle, then we, we think we've hit the goal of manhood. That's what it means to, you know, be a man. We have those things. And yet, it's so shallow, so superficial, when that's all that there is. And there's nothing else. David had a lot. But what was most precious to him, what he focused on, was his character and his nature with God. David handed down his person. He didn't hand down just his possessions. And as a result, his son Solomon, his son Solomon is going to sit on the throne of Israel for 40 years. And he gave his son Solomon the, 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 the godliest, most prosperous, peaceful time in all of Israel's history was during the time of Solomon. Now, sadly, though, while David passed down his person to Solomon, Solomon only passed down his possessions to his son, who was Rehoboam. If you know your, your, your history 
under Rehoboam, the kingdom of Israel is going to split. And for 200 years, they're going to go through a civil war because of Rehoboam's character. And again, you know, and for men, folks, men, you can be seeking God yourself. But all are not handing it down to your children. The issue isn't, are you got it? The issue is, are you plugged in and handing this down to your kids? Are you invested in pouring Jesus Christ into your children? Into their nature so it becomes a part of them and not just what they have. Again, David poured it into Solomon. Uh, Solomon just handed down possessions to his son Rehoboam. Now I want to take you to one other real quick point here. Um, and we're going to put these verses up here. First Samuel chapter 16, it speaks about David here. It says, when they entered, and, and this is when and Samuel, remember, is, you know, Saul is, has turned away from God, and so God is anointing a new king, and he's sending Samuel to go find that king. And he sends uh, you know, Samuel to, to look for a king. And he says, when he entered, he looked at Eliab and thought, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance. Or the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For God sees not as a man sees. For a man looks at the outward appearance. But God, he looks at the heart. God is looking at the heart. And, and folks, don't fall into the trap of judging based on external appearances. We can, we can put a lot of masks on. We can say the right thing. We can go the right place, do the right things. And it not be part of our inner quality. And God has given men a deep inner quality to be developed, to be submitted unto his lordship. And once that is given to God, his spirit will dramatically impact the surrounding and those people around us and our children, our families, for good. And I'm just reminded as I think about David and when he teaches us, you know, that we all know that, that God has given, God has wired women. Uh, with a special bond with their children. You know, the, the ability to nurture it and just so it's so instinctive. But God has given a special bond with our children as well for men. An ability to reflect that inner character, the very nature. We have an ability to put an imprint on the very nature of our children. And so as David said to Solomon, be strong, show yourself a man. Keep the charge of the Lord your God to walk in his ways. And then we all know that our actions, our hearts will speak louder than anything on the external. Anything that we put out for our children, what's going to matter if we're truly in our hearts? Are we handing that to our children today? Let's pray. Father, I thank you that this call that you've given to each and every one of us, Lord, that we do not walk this path by ourselves. Father, I confess to you, as I'm sure David must have that, that, that inability, Lord, to walk, you know, faithful to you, that, that inability, Father, that we have in, in our society as we are being attacked on all sides to stay firm. But Father, his trust was in you and my trust is in you as well. And I pray that you will use the, the men of this church, Lord, to make a difference for you, to make a difference in our own children, our grandchildren, into the, the, the children that are being discipled here in, in this church family. Father, use us as only you can and your spirit can, Father, to make a difference for eternity, to lay up treasures in heaven. Father, I thank you for this day and I pray a blessing on these men here. Father, that regardless of what society says, that you will raise up within us a true call of who you have in the Lord Jesus, who you have us to be in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we will thank you in thy son's name.
Father, we don't walk this path by ourselves, but Father, we walk it with you. And I'm so thankful for that. And I ask you to dismiss us with your grace and your mercy upon us. Father, dismiss us with a, a true call upon our life to be men of God. And Father, I pray that you will continue to give us that impact on our children, on our families, on our church. We gather together in thy son's precious name.